those who have had had a profound loss a significant loss you know a loss of a loved one a loss of a relationship a loss of any kind of loss that actually brings down your whole life a greek stories have an innate healing power so please use that super power that you already have share stories with others and also be an audience to somebody who's going through the journey by if you are feeling emotionally not able to manage your emotions lot of stress you feel that you are not giving you are you are not able to give your best to your family to your career to your financial needs to your status or so and it is impacting different areas of your life please don't do try to do it on your own and imagine is like a pain killer for the moment because you are not yet ready to you know experience that pain your body or your physiology makes you feel the feeling of numbness and then you can't experience any pain at that point of time hi everyone welcome to another episode of confident storytelling podcast and in this episode i am going to interview india's leading grief coach deepak deopure deepak is an internationally certified grief and emotional resilience coach he specializes in helping individuals navigate the difficult process of grieving after a significant loss as someone who has the first hand experience in navigating deepak understand how overwhelming and confusing it can feel and that's why he is passionate about providing a safe and supportive space for his clients to work through their emotions develop coping strategies and find a path forward In this episode we touched upon various topics including Deepak and my own journey of griefs how unhandled grief can manifest in various forms how men and women handle grief differently what are the stages in grief and also what is the core significance of storytelling when it comes to resolving grief and loss i hope you are going to enjoy this interview as i enjoyed interviewing Deepak and let's get started Welcome everyone to another episode of Confident Storytelling podcast and welcome Deepak how are you doing Hey Aditosh thank you for having me uh, I'm doing great actually uh, mid of the month now and uh, looking forward to complete some of the things that i intend to do in the rest of the month and uh, yeah yeah and how have been you been doing yeah not too bad and yeah the best part is yeah we, i am finally recording some episode for my confidence storytelling podcast getting to converse with people like you from diverse background listening to their stories and getting lessons out of it my favorite part so let's let's get right into it So Deepak I know a little bit about your story but I want the listeners of this podcast or viewers of this video on YouTube as well to know more about your story uh what happened and how it went through and then we'll dig deeper into the different aspects and your journey so far All right Haritosh so um so the story goes like that I am also coming from a corporate background okay being in the it industry like you also uh, for 16 years somewhere around similar right we have been and in the same company apparently that we have worked for quite long so we have we share a very unique connection uh, uh, my last company is you are still uh, you have been associated with that so that's my corporate life and um, was quite happy as, as such uh, going on with my corporate life was in for a quite long for about 6 to 7 years 7 to 8 years around i was uh, in the european geography working in netherlands in amsterdam things were going quite fine along with my daughter and my wife uh, we were living there and uh, you know suddenly life had to take a you know a u turn something that was tragic was not expected as such you know uh, in 2018 all of a sudden my wife was detected with blood cancer and uh, suddenly i was thrown into this pit of uh, you know kind of a bottomless pit trying to understand what what i should be doing how i should be coping with all these things but uh, 
but apparently i focused more on uh, you know getting her treatment and starting her treatment going through the chemotherapy rounds and i was quite in a different uh, phase of my career at that point of time you know almost like going to join a, another company that I had resigned right uh, pcs at that time and uh, you know looking forward to maybe kind of uh, settle down a little bit there but then the focus has to be shifted and uh, to the to the treatment so i stayed in tcs at that time okay and uh, continued starting her treatment which went on for next 6 months mm-hmm. okay to with my with the help of my parents and my in-laws they just uh, you know shuffled a little bit uh, for a couple of months to support me during this and uh, my daughter was also around like 2 and 1/2 years old at that point of time so quite difficult phase for me um and things things went on initially good was she was treatment was going well or so but eventually at the at the end there was a process called a stem cell transplant that she had to go through and uh, unfortunately during that period during that phase uh, she got infected with a with a virus uh, and uh, people with cancer treatment they have their immune systems in those processes are are to down brought down to zero i would say Yeah. so at that at that time if at all any a minor infection can be life threatening and and unfortunately that happened she got infected and then she was moved to icu because of her kidney started to fail and slowly over the period of, over the next 20 days one by one her organs started to fail other organs and eventually i lost her in 2019 you know and uh, that was you know i suddenly found myself you know not knowing what to do how to do mm-hmm. you know how to manage these emotions how to i was still in a disbelief for a long period of time correct uh in a foreign country still i did not move immediately to india i continued to stay there for about a year yeah uh, with the support of my parents also because i was in a good place working had very great colleagues who supported me all the way along so i did not wanted to take any drastic step in my career at that time of time because i knew that i am not in the right state to take any big decision so i continued to give myself 6 months uh, that okay during this 6 months i'll just hang around doing whatever is there just not taking any any drastic steps mm-hmm. so that's what i did for the next one year actually stayed there in netherlands uh, but then i eventually decided to move back to india and uh, that's when when i came back to india i realized that what am i what i'm doing is no longer fulfilling me mm. is no longer giving me that happiness that i was looking for and that i used to get when i was doing my job right and i lost that meaning of you know why i should be doing you know to make uh, you know make money and maybe to have a you know a, a great life so so all that thing but became quite superficial for me um and i felt this is not what i want and during this process i mean i spirituality was a great savior for me you know uh certain philosophical schools of indian philosophy which i really got connected with me because that helped in my own healing journey right and i felt that this is what i want to continue spending my time into if i have mm-hmm. to study i need to spend time in certifications learning and all those things that is a part and parcel of upskilling right correct so, uh but then i found that okay i have a clash of timing if i have to give time to what i am doing on the spiritual front i do not have time to do anything on the to grow in my career in the it so so i realize that now if when i know that this is what i like i want to align my career in a way that whatever time i am spending on into that area should be helpful in my career in some way if not completely okay um and then i was with this idea of thinking for next 6 months or so i would say 2020 during the covid period i was contemplating on this and mm. even in 2021 till the half uh, year so i would say 2020 20, end of 2020 i get into that thought that okay this is not what i want to do. and uh, for 6 months i was contemplating on that i did not knew what to do how to do but somewhere you know i got remembered one of my friend had uh, 
told me that you can be a coach. I did not knew who is a coach actually. Right. No, because of some conversations that I was having uh, with that person, and then uh, you know she told me like that, and then uh, I thought, okay, let's let's have a look. What is a coach? Okay, <laughs> and I googled on internet and found out. Okay, there is a, a, a profession like a coaching like that, and where people can actually help. Um, you know, in different niches and different areas. So I went into some coach training program. I found it nice. That's where my journey started into coaching space. And I realized that this is what I like it. I will enjoy it, helping people, helping people into those areas. And and that's when I, at that time I had that thought that okay, I want to help people in the area of, of grief and resilience because that's where my own personal experience had been. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had no, I did not had much clarity about how I should be doing that. So I started with career coaching. Okay. Uh, and went on, I'm still doing career coaching as part of my coaching, uh, uh, niches, but, uh, for last one year or so, then I went back again into those, you know, you need to work on the grief and resilience coaching. Right. So I got myself, uh, found a mentor, a great mentor who, uh, who can actually, you know, help me in into materializing all these coaching aspects for this particular niche. And that's when the journey started. So now I am uh, mainly focused into grief and resilience, where I work with people into, uh, you know, those who have, have had a profound loss, a significant loss, you know, a loss of a loved one, a loss of a relationship, a loss of any kind of loss that actually brings down your whole life, right? Mm-hmm. So this is the area that I work uh, with people to to bring that resilience back, to bounce back from this kind of a situation which right. they face mm-hmm. so that they can actually, you know, come back and face the life as they would like to rather than just be a victim and, uh, you know, accept as what has happened because this is, these kind of things is are not something that we choose for ourselves, right? They happen. Absolutely. Right. So that's what uh, I am, you know, uh, doing. And this is Amazing. the area that I'm working in. I know because we both are from the same mentor whose ecosystem we are part of. And that's right. how we connected. And and then we figure out that we are, we are at so many different levels. We are having a, a correlation to say. So we worked in the similar company. And at the time yes. of recording, I am going through my own... Uh, resignation period i have no calm in saying that so yes i i have decided to move on and make it my full career as such and then uh, there's another level that i connected with you which probably i haven't told you before or maybe i have i don't remember which is about this grief part because i remember uh, in 2021 uh, even though i had many instances where i i had like no lot of uh, setbacks in life i got my visa rejected in us that was a big blow to my you no know, confidence and ego and then uh, for yeah. the almost 10 months or 11 months i was all alone in a house contemplating of uh, okay this is great corporate life what is it that i want to do but in 2021 I came back to India after a year and uh, with the events happening, suddenly my mother passed away and it was we were in, and she was pretty young. She had just turned 61. So she wasn't very old or she had certain medical issues, but we were not expected expecting that to happen so soon. We knew something like, like that will happen eventually in the next five, 10 years. But that suddenly happened and that was a big blow, which I wasn't prepared. So it took me some time to grasp. And I I remember that uh, we had our flight in like five days to go back to London. And uh, it was early morning and suddenly said that, no, I don't think I'm going to survive. And we thought, okay, maybe she's having a pain and, and she's kind of, you know, people say when they are in so much of pain and all. Yes. But within next 15 minutes, he actually passed away and I was shocked from the core what just happened. And it took me some time to uh, uh, grasp that, to make peace with it, to go on uh, 
एंड आई आई फील लाइक नो वी आर सो एज सन्स वी आर सो कनेक्टेड टू आर मदर्स अ पार्ट ऑफ अस इज ऑलवेज विथ हर इन सम फॉर्म और और इन स्पिरिचुअलिटी और समथिंग एंड आई स्टिल फील दैट आई एम मेकिंग हर प्राउड एट डिफरेंट लेवल सो दैट वॉज अ लेवल आई डोंट थिंक आई हैव शेयर विथ यू अर्लियर बट वेन आई हर्ड अबाउट योर स्टोरी somewhere that part of my story also came out like yes i connect to deepak on that uh, so first of all thank you for sharing and your journey has been yeah i would say yeah uh, very very unfortunate to start up with nothing like that should happen to anyone sorry for your loss as well because this is the first time i'm hearing about uh, you haven't shown that although we have spoken a lot many times before yes 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 there are always some things about ourselves that you know we don't know and we keep it to ourselves and when only a right tech comes then you share so i think thanks for yeah, sharing yeah, yeah. yeah suddenly i mean i mean i was and also preparing but when uh, prepared to say that but few minutes before this podcast i, I don't know from where it came and yeah. like yeah i can probably talk about so sometime you have these universal you know mm-hmm. uh, signals that happen to you and thoughts come so i thought okay, maybe this is a good place to talk about that and uh, yeah so something of that sort happening to your life where your life suddenly goes from where you are trying to settle down to completely shattered but i love how you have taken that towards spirituality uh towards taking it or making it as a mission uh to heal others and uh, i want to ask you the question is uh, you took a big decision to came back to india because you were there almost you had if i'm not wrong you had the opportunity to continue as well what do you think were the factors behind uh, coming back to india and uh, you had you had a young uh, daughter as well so i talked to a lot of parents and a lot of parents actually crave for them to go out of the country and get them educated at, and so many other factors as well what were your factors to actually come back to india yeah i mean um, i was although i was living there in netherlands for always i had this feeling that you know i want to go back to india mm. at certain time you know uh, there were times when i used to when i used to hear the song of swadeshi jo desh hai tera and like you know Got i used to connect with that so long that okay uh, so uh, but the things were you know i mean i was in a good place you know uh, with good colleagues great work Uh, my wife was also happy you know my daughter was born so we thought okay let's uh, for some time let's continue here uh, and live there right but when she passed away all of a sudden and then i had no clue how to live in a foreign country all alone mm. care of my daughter while while doing my job okay although yes i had some great friends who who were like you know don't worry about everything we are there to support you any time you want any help we are there to support you there were some great friends that i had they are still my great friends okay but yeah i mean i had you know we i felt that okay i cannot depend on you know yes you know, family is some one that you would first like to depend on right because everyone has their life everyone has their uh, priorities in their life although they would have all definitely helped me and they are still in connection with me even after 5 years mm so uh, uh especially the the teacher her daycare teacher you know she is a dutch lady uh she was so good and she i mean helped me a lot in all those so uh, times when i was going through this trouble and i'm still connected with her okay wow so uh, so i had good but the, the thoughts that i i took mainly is, is that you know my daughter her school was going to get started so i thought okay this is if our school starts then again it will go into the flow and then i will have to secondly i needed support i definitely needed support and i was not uh, in that state can i can manage it for, on my own even after one year when i took mm-hmm. this decision i realized that no i cannot manage on my own especially my mental state you know and if i am not in the right mental state it will affect my physical state and both okay. of them together will impact my ability to parent my daughter to be as a father because now for me i had to not only be her father but also her mother right so, so there were dual responsibilities for me and i realized that this is not something that i can do on my own um 
and um, that was one of the major decision i would say that was the major decision and then i always had that thought that okay eventually i have to go back right so this is this is the right time no uh, i as mm. i told you know for six months i did not want to take any decision yes and that till the year when i thought that okay this thought is now continuously there for my in my mind for a year that okay i have to go back so now i knew that okay this is not an impulsive kind of a thought that i am getting because i am in that state of mind but it is more of a prolonged thought a more stable thought so it is the right time to take the decision and uh, and i think that was one of the factor i'm again being with my parents uh, being there with the uh, supportive family was one of the reasons that I took back, took the decision to come back to India. Although it was very, very difficult, I would say. It was very difficult, even though it was my own choice. There were things that quite, the other things were which were quite good there, you know. I mean, life is quite easy there as it compared to India. I know. <laughs> that uh, it was very well, right? Things are very sorted. You have you know, uh, daycares to take care of your children, the office timings are, you know, properly under balance and, you know, so things are there, but you need emotional support as well, right? When this period, uh, during this period. And uh, it, so it was a tough decision. Schooling was also one of the factors that I was considering because I really liked the schooling in Netherlands, the way they uh, uh, help children to, you know, understand their strengths and so the answer is unique uh, but I thought you know that cannot be just the reason I can stay there because uh, uh, so that was a re uh, factor that I was was a difficult and I, I would say that was another grief that when I came back to India see grief is not just about a loss of a loved one any loss Correct. can trigger a grief so Absolutely. when I came back to India, that was also a small kind of a different kind of a grief that I experienced. All those people who were a part of my life for those seven years, my colleagues, my work, I left those behind. My house, I left those behind. So I felt that grief for again when I came back to India. Amazing. So that is the factor. So things are difficult, but slowly it you get used to it. Slowly uh, things get normal and and now I'm completely fine. <laughs> I so uh, much resonate with what you said. Uh, grief is not only for humans or your um, family and loved ones, but also for places, also for opportunities you got or you missed it. Because like I said, in 2019, suddenly out of a blue, uh, I had to come back from US to India, not yeah. on my own choice. And oh. I literally had, I can, I can now sense that I had a grief for pretty yes. much like six months to one year where I felt like, why me? Like why I have uh, been going through that. And, and for those who don't know, US visa process is uh, one of the most difficult process. It's like, it went on for a year and then you prepare so much and you create and produce so much documentation. And then suddenly you get an email from USCIS that no, okay, you're visa is visa application is rejected get out of this country uh, i yeah. felt literally like a slap on my face that after i doing so much and uh, I, I was doing very good like you i was doing very good professionally as well i was uh, expecting a promotion i was extending my extending my portfolio so i was very much into corporate job but that was a, like big like a big tight slap on me and and i feel like there's still a little bit of grief over there and uh, mm -hmm. It was very hard for me also for next six months while everybody was happy because my family wanted was like wow you're coming back and uh, relatives and all i felt like no i felt like a failure like why i have to go through it while i'm doing all the processes like why suddenly my life's decision is dependent on someone else i think yeah. the seed was put on that day itself when I had to leave everything. I had literally 10 days to, and I, I say a speech to BHK, to two suitcases. So literally I had a proper house and car and other thing in US and I had to yes. throw and donate and sell to come back to two, two suitcases. That's what I became in 10 days. Uh, while yeah. 10 days before I was thinking, oh, I'll be probably getting a promotion. We're doing this and that. Uh, I, it, it, I felt like, a big failure at that time and uh, 
I can now associate when you say grief is not only about people. That was a big grief uh, in terms of career. And I could say that from there, my disassociation, now that I'm going out, I can say my disassociation started with work in terms of, okay, yeah, it, work is not the only thing and everything. I have other other things to also focus on and that's where the journey started. So very much uh, associate with you on that. That's right. I mean, and you rightly said, actually, that is also grief. Any, any process in life wherein you are not able to manage your emotions or you are doubting your emotions, they are in a roller coaster uh, and, you know, you are not feeling control. You have, do not have the control on your emotions. That is an experience of grief, mm -hmm. right? And any kind of a loss, any kind of a, a dependency that you had on, had on something, someone that is taken away, can trigger a grief, a feeling of grief. Absolutely. Thank you. So next question for you is, uh, because as I, as we discovered in that, I had two times grief, which uh, I would say undiscovered grief. How common is it uh, uh, for people to experience these kind of grief? Like what are the, some of the symptoms or some of the things that people can observe about themselves and then feel like, okay, maybe I'm going through this grief or journey. Yeah, one of the biggest um, indicator of grief is overwhelming stress mm. and anxiety. Because uh, stress goes along with grief. Because when you are in a grief, right, there will be many situations in your life that will be a trigger point for you for giving you stress. Maybe there is a there is a, your career, there is a financial situation, maybe children, child care, and so many things yes. all around the situation is not in your favor, I would say, kind of in a turbulent weather where you may imagine a ship which is in a turbulent storm kind of a feeling. Right. If you feel like that, you know, you are in a storm and all the way you are just being like, you know, uh, pushed all over, have no control, you feel no control about your emotions. One day you feel okay, the next moment you don't feel okay, you know, feelings and emotions like sadness, anger, depression, guilt, blame, okay, these are some of the emotions that go along with grief, right, guilt is also one of the big emotions, right, so so many emotions and they keep on like, you know, switching over, you know, mm. one time sadness, then you have a guilt, then have your, have your uh, you know, depression and so many different things. And you find it difficult to contemplate, you know, what is it? One more emotion that is very common in grief is called as a numbness. Mm. You know, you just don't feel anything. You don't feel anything. It is a very, very, and you, and you feel, you doubt this feeling. How can I feel like that? Mm. I mean, I had a huge loss like this. Uh, and I'm just not feeling anything. I just feel numb to anything kind of a thing. And it is more commonly associated with the loss of a loved one or a relationship loss wherein you know you had love involved, you know, more of a mm -hmm. person there. So you get that numbness kind of a feeling. This is it's a it's a very strange feeling to be in, you know. You yeah. how how can I feel like that? Okay. But you know, that is a very normal feeling. It is it is normal, it is your body's way to protect you because you are not ready to take on that whole pain at this moment. Imagine it like that, you know, when you are going to a dentist for a root canal, you know, uh, the doctor gives you that painkiller because the pain that is going to come with that root canal is not something that you will be able to bear it. Yeah. That is to give you that painkiller, right? So that numbness you can imagine is like a painkiller. For the mm -hmm. moment, because you are not yet ready to, 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 you know, experience that pain, your body or your physiology makes you feel the feeling of numbness and then wow. you can't experience any pain at that point of time. So that is a very common association. It can also you feel this in different kinds of griefs and different losses as well. But if you feel like that, a numbness, you know, you just feel, uh, you know, no interest, nothing, nothing interests me. There is no source of happiness that is coming to you. You feel anxiety all the time, anxious, worried, stressed, these are some of the typical symptoms of that you are experiencing grief. And if a grief, it is actually researched like that, 
uh, a grief, a strong grief, if it stays with you for more than three months, it has actually the capability to physically manifest illness in your body. It can physically manifest some kind of illness in your body. It has been researched, it has been scientifically proven because then there is a lot of stress and those fight and flight response that you that that actually protect you at initial stages, they become a chronic stress. Mm. That chronic stress ensures that all those stress hormones, cortisol and those, they are always there in your system. Because there and of course that's an energy, right? If that energy is not dissipated in any Correct. way, Correct. it can take a form. Energy can neither be destroyed nor be created, right? Correct. And it can only Correct. change its form, right? So it changes its form. It takes a physical form, the form of a maybe a back pain, uh, you know, a stomach pain or a headache or kind of, a, or you will frequently fall ill or your immune system goes down. So many things. And I experienced that myself, you know. Mm -hmm. I It started, the lower back pain started for me after around a year or so. Suddenly, all of a sudden, that lower back pain was quite hard for me. And then I started yoga for that. So that has helped me for past two years. I'm continuously doing and that has helped me. So, yeah, that's the thing, wow. basically. I'm, I'm having too many uh, uh, realization moments now. I mean, I figured it out like similar to you when I was going through that uh, period, 10 days period. Uh, I couldn't sleep on a bed because I was having so much of back pain. Of course, there was so much of stress. My ma mother was undergoing a surgery. I could not travel because of visa thing. And then then I got this uh, big blow to my thing and I had 10, 10 days. So those 10 days, last 10 days, I actually slept on the floor because I couldn't lie down on the bed at any second because it was such a chronic back pain. And I can very well say when you say it is probably the manifestation of the stress and the and the grief that you no, know, and I figured out afterwards, I came back, I did some tests and all. They said it's it's vitamin D deficiency and all of all of those. But suddenly after a few months, when I was able to make patch it, it uh, automatically disappeared. So I, I said that it may not be the directly the vitamin D and things like that. But it was definitely and I have observed myself like we all that whenever I'm having a few stress, I start, I redevelop those uh, back pain. So that's indication for me that something is not right. And I have to look at what, what is it that I'm stressing too much on? Yeah. So your body is a, is a, is as a natural uh, mechanism in it to indicate you if there is something going wrong in it. Yeah. But we are just being attentive towards it. Mm. If you, you are attentive towards it, it will give us the indication that something is going wrong. Take care about me, right? Mm. So that, and it comes with experience and the new realization. Correct. And to get that, it becomes easier for you to proactively prepare for such kind of situations that might be happening. Brilliant. So I have this one question, like, uh, and does men and women uh, react differently to grief or is it individual to individual? Yeah, that's a very good question, actually, Haritosh. Uh, it's often, uh, you know, of course, when I when I was going through my training program with my mentor, we also covered uh, this thing, how people grieve differently. You know, mm. the answer is this, that actually everyone grieves differently. Mm. And not even everyone. Every time you grieve differently. Oh, okay. Yeah. It is not that uh, for this loss, you are grieving like that, but uh, every loss that you will face in your life, you will always grieve like that. It is not like that. Every loss can it trigger a diff like every pregnancy is different. That's what in women is uh, they say, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like that. The grief is every grief is different. So definitely for everyone, for men or women also, it can be different, right? But there is something that is common. There is something that has been observed more of like you know, men have a tendency to not talk about it. Typically, the men have a tendency to okay, because we are raised in a world where They cannot show uh, their vulnerability to the world, right? We have been living into that world, you know, a, a highly optimistic, manly world, right? Which is, which is, which has actually, you know, for men has not worked for it that well, and that's why 
in so many situations when uh, when uh, when we face some such kind of disruptions like that men tend to actually isolate or they do not talk about it yeah okay so, so that's what it observation but not always okay so this mm. is a typical women have a tendency to more talk about it they are more open to actually taking help as i see most of i would see men almost 100% of my clients are women 100% i would wow. say wow so even though there are uh, men have uh, reached out to me and we have had some calls but eventually they did not take and went ahead for the support mm. and that's what also indicates me that okay even they how much ever they feel like it they do not take that step or they do not you know they sit on the edge and they do not take that plunge to take the help while women women are more open for taking help you know they are uh, they feel and they are more expressive about their emotions okay so that that's typically that is observed actually that's what i uh, i can say very true very true uh, i think yeah this is how we have been conditioned at least in our indian context that no yeah, yeah men are supposed to not talk openly about their emotion what's going on and yes now that we are started celebrating these happy fathers day and things like that i think yeah men are men are becoming little bit vocal about that but i think still they have a long way to go so so so, so what is your advice for both women of course they are vocal about it but especially for men who are going through uh, this uh, period of you no know, uh, rejection that no i can't go through that or they understand that but still they are at the cliff that okay maybe i maybe it will heal them it by itself i don't need to do anything what's your advice for those people right so again a good question aritosh uh, because uh, you know especially in our indian culture in our indian context you know we have this rituals that are associated after you know a loss of a loved one right 13 days rituals and right. so many wherein we are given a dedicated time to actually you know grieve and mourn you are allowed to cry and you are allowed to or do everything you know to express your uh, your sadness and your depression during that period but once that 13 days over everyone will go back into their life no one is going to talk about it that is how we are conditioned and uh, and th- that is actually you know culturally we have devised this although it has some some scientific theories about it you know with respect to karma and, and the soul which is you know you want to actually uh, help the soul to move into its next into its next stage of its evolution that's why it is it is said that you know you know to not to emotionally try to connect the soul because somewhere at a at a at a different dimension we right. are still okay so that has that context but that does not mean that you are not supposed to talk about it that does not mean that you are not supposed to grieve about it or you are not supposed to because it grief doesn't follow a timeline mm. okay so uh, some people can grieve for the whole life they can grieve for one year for two year for some people it does happen that second year is more tougher than first year also have seen in many cases right so there are certain needs that i that uh, that i believe that these are the needs of grief and we have to address those needs in order mm-hmm. for you to not go into a complicated grief a complicated grief wherein you are just not able to manage it right so and as i said right if you are allowing if you are not moving ahead in your grief journey and you are stuck in your grief the grief has a tendency to manifest into a physical form so that is one of that is the reason that you have to address the grief mm. so what the needs of grief that i would say is the grief has to be witnessed right so what does i mean with that is like you know grief is basically again now it's very interesting to what you do haritosh right there is a story in us that we want to tell correct right what has happened you know what how this happened all in that that story you want to tell someone right and uh, of course that story the version of the story keeps on changing over the time once you get a hold of the grief or so right but you have a need of telling that story to people mm. right and that is the first need of grief 
Second need of grief is about expressing your emotion. Now, when you're telling the stories, right, you also express your emotions, right? You give a right expression to those emotions, whatever it is, it is a sadness or anger or so. If you are giving it a safe space, if you're working with someone as a professional or a coach, right, the coach can help you to express those emotions in a right, in a, in a more uh, safe way. Okay, anger can express can be expressed in a very bad way by you know going and hitting someone and maybe breaking your TV or anything, or it can also be expressed in a much more safer way. Yes. So a coach can help you to actually get that expression out. You know, find out coping strategies. Right. So that's the second need. You know, expression because emotions not getting expressed will not will not they will not dry off. Mm. They will take a different form. Because again, as I said, it they are energy. Energy, if the emotion wants to come out in the form of sadness, you have to give it the right platform. If it mm. wants to come out in the form of anger, you have to give that platform. You cannot say that, okay, no, I'm going to suffer. It's like a pressure cooker. At certain point of time, it will burst. It will explode. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's the second need of grief. The third need of grief is to, you know, uh, to uh, uh, to the guilt, basically, if there is a guilt associated in your grief, grief, that is a very very strong emotion. If if you have a feeling that if at all I did that, if if I if I would have done that, then this wouldn't have happened. That if if this is there, then it has to be worked upon. The guilt has to be worked upon. Okay, so that's the third uh, need of grief. Okay. So the fourth need of grief is about, you know, uh, uh, if there are old wounds, mm -hmm. often in our childhood, we experience sometimes, you know, some kind of uh, situations where it, it, it creates our personality. Maybe some people are experiencing bullying right. and then devise a way that isolation is a way for me to protect myself. Okay. So that might have helped them at that point of time, mm. but that is not the right way of dealing it in your grief. So old wounds have a tendency to come back in your grief journey. Okay. And you will not understand why I am behaving like that. It is actually coming from an old wound. Mm. So the inner child healing is also needed at that point of time. Wow. Right. The fifth need of grief is, is you know, um, Finding a meaning and a purpose at some point of time, it is not a meaning in the loss itself. There is no meaning in the loss. Mm. Okay, it is a meaning for you after the loss. So how you can carry the legacy of that person, yeah. that relationship, that thing that you lived, right? You know, like again, the loss for you was the U.S. visa rejection. How can you carry? You have carried that legacy by actually. One of the, as you only said, right, one of the trigger of doing what you are doing is somewhere has that root, right? Absolutely, 100%. So that legacy to it, right? That there is something that is coming from that, right? So a meaning. Now you have found out a meaning in that loss, right? So meaning and a purpose for you after that loss is something, again, it cannot be, it cannot happen very early in the grief, at the time when you are ready for it then it has to be worked upon. But, uh, you know, that is what are the needs of grief. And, and this is what I would say, we have, and everyone has the same needs of grief. These are the same needs of grief. If you are feeling emotionally not able to manage your emotions, a lot of stress, you feel that you are not giving, you are, you are not able to give your best to your family, to your career, to your financial needs, to your status or so, and it is impacting different areas of your life, please don't do. try to do it on your own. Mm. At least from a coach. Someone as a life coach can also help, but a grief coach is, is a better person who knows exactly how to help you into this. And bring that resilience in your life so that you can bounce back from this adversity or a disruption. So that is that. what I would say. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I think... I could correlate on different level. Of course, stories, I think, is one of the first 
needs that you mentioned about telling your stories and i think one of the healing that has happened with me because i've started telling the story and for the very first year i told because i'm part of toastmaster in other places wherever i got a chance i went it out uh yeah. don't know whether it's right or wrong but i think somewhere when telling that the has stories, contributed to your healing that yes. contributed to healing now i can feel that because that was somewhere my story and i wanted to convey a message but like you said to went through emotions and guilt wound but ultimately i found a meaning and purpose that i don't want to let anybody else decide the fate of my life or journey or thing so so i decided yes i'm not going back to us for work even though i had multiple opportunities and then eventually it, it led me towards thinking about a uh, shift in the career becoming an entrepreneur and coach and helping people and it also gave me a meaning that how can i help people who are having great skills in terms of execution coding but they are not able to express how i can empower that so that's also a meaning and purpose given to me so thank you so much for sharing and as you said guys if you are not sure what the needs of your grief are i highly recommend that get a coach sometime uh, the least investment that we do is on ourselves but i believe the best return that you get is when you invest in ourselves be it a uh, learning a skill be it a uh, building network but also getting a coach for whichever area of the life it's not only related to one health or money or skills but also relationship but also grief and resilience i think this is very very important for us as uh, humans to work on those and understand that sometime we need expert help and there are expert out there who specialize who know what exact your next steps are going to be and yeah deepak is one such course uh, one such coach in india which i know who has worked on this who has gone is not uh, somebody who has gone through the journey is certified resilience and grief coach and has worked many people so if you feel like you need to discuss something uh, how can somebody reach out to you deepak yeah definitely uh, aritosh uh, uh, i can be reached out through my website deepakdeopare.com okay my name my first name and my last name okay uh, and of course directly via my email uh, through my email connect at deepakdeopare.com or in my website there are also my number my number is also there that you can check out and you can reach out to me so multiple ways linkedin facebook instagram i'm there at all the places right Amazing. and anywhere if you feel like uh, you know i could be of any help to you in your own uh, journey of your grief and resilience or so then i would be really happy to help you and anyone who is listening out here thank you so much deepak and i think this is the universe conspiring us to meet such amazing humans i think uh, had i met you earlier i would have healed much faster uh, but thank you so much uh, so what is your one last message for the listeners and the viewers of this podcast what is your one message for them my one message is 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 the work that you are doing haritesh haritosh is stories have such a beautiful connection with our lives Yes. right and i always tell that in my coaching sessions also with my clients you know just say whatever you want to say mm. you know and they often start it happened on that day right and a story always starts with like that on yeah. that day right so there is a inherent need in our human psychology to to tell stories right? absolutely 100% and when we tell stories and when we hear stories they contribute in our healing and healing others beautiful right? so if there is a story if there is a story that you would like to say and if there is a story that you would like to tell to this world don't shy away from any story is not a bad story any story is a good story for you uh, you know to heal others and also yourself right and there are so many approach i know that you have teach you also teach in your programs how to find out different topics of creating yes. stories or so but your life has <coughs> gives you so many opportunities to tell so many stories right and uh, that is what the last message would be right if you are grieving if you are in your process of grieving 
you're finding it difficult to manage your emotion and stress, at least find a friend. At mm. least uh, some family member with whom you can talk about it. You know, at least be a listener to someone where you are not judging them. Just, you, if you are helping, if you want to help someone, this is the best thing that you can do is just, you know, just be there and listen. You do not have to say anything. Okay. And if you want actually to be helped, find a friend or a family member or anyone with whom you can just talk. You know, 50% of time that helps. That is the, what you want. Okay. Thank so you so much. So away, away from talking about uh, your yes. uh, emotions. Yes. yes. That is what I would say. Thank you so much. And as you said, I 100% agree. Stories have an innate healing power. So please use that superpower that you already have. Share stories with others and also be an audience to somebody who's going through the journey by uh, without having any uh, bias, without having any uh, any decision just listen to people i think that would really help make this world a better place thank you so much deepak it was an honor and a privilege to have you in the confidence storytelling podcast i'm looking forward to having more such episodes in future as well absolutely i was loving to have you aritosh now always as uh, inspire get inspired with the work and dedication that you do put with your work so kudos to you and and to your viewers and your listeners thank you so much for having me Thank you.